Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, you can always find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Sunday in the MLB. First up, it's the Detroit Tigers taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. We're going to see Joey Wentz and Jeffrey Springs, two lefties on the mound for this one. You know, Joey Wentz, not my favorite starting pitching option to back. We saw him struggle in spring training of this year, going 14 and two-thirds innings. He had 19 strikeouts, but he gave up 13 earned runs, four home runs as well. That's a 2.5 home runs per nine rating and a 7.98 ERA. You know, last season, Wentz in 32 and two-thirds at the big league level, struck out 27 batters. He had a decent 3.03 ERA, a little bit higher FIP, though, at 3.54. And I do think the Tampa Bay Rays can get to him for a few runs. I like Jeffrey Springs in that Rays rotation. This is a really solid Rays uh, starting rotation this season. I think it delivers in this one against one of the weakest offenses in baseball. So give me the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm going to lay the run line. Next up, it's the San Francisco Giants taking on the New York Yankees. We're going to see a major league debut here on the mound for the Yankees as Johnny Brito takes the bump. He'll be facing off with Ross Stripling on the other side for San Francisco. You know, Johnny Brito in spring training, solid numbers from the youngster. 13 innings with a 2.8, a 2.08 ERA. Only 10 strikeouts is a little bit concerning, but he didn't walk a single batter. Only one home run allowed. And I do think he is the better option, especially with the Yankees' bullpen behind him in this game when you compare him to Ross Stripling, who really struggled in spring training. I think the Yankees' bats can get to Stripling for a few runs early on, add a few on this Giants' bullpen as well. And we saw the Giants in the first game of this series. The offense was lackluster. I can't trust it in a spot like this. I don't think we're getting a good enough price. I think the price is right with the Yankees. So give me the New York Yankees on the money line. Next up, let's go to the Braves and Nationals game as we see Jared Schuster making his Major League debut in this one. He'll be facing off with Mackenzie Gore on the other side for the Nationals. You know, Jared Schuster is a starting pitcher that's really just improved his game year after year. Even when he started in college at Wake Forest, he struggled in the first year at 7.41 ERA, 21 walks and 34 innings. But you know, he really improved his draft stock in the last few years. He was a first-round pick, and now you look at his numbers. Last year at Double A in Mississippi, he pitched 90 and two-thirds innings with 106 strikeouts. His walk rate went down to 2.2 walks per nine, had a below one home runs per nine as well. And you know that's Double A, but you look at spring training numbers as well. Schuster. 18 and two-thirds innings, 18 strikeouts, a 1.45 ERA, only four walks allowed. So, you know, I do think this sets up to be a nice start for him because he's facing one of the weaker lineups in baseball. On the other side, Mackenzie Gore, you know, starting pitcher that we do see a lot of potential in. He's one of the better prospects for the Nationals in their rotation, but he had some, you know, concerning numbers in the advanced numbers, the average exit velocity, hard hit percentage, well below league average. I do think the Braves can get to him. He struggled a little bit in spring training. His strikeout numbers were down. I like the Braves to get this one, so give me the Atlanta Braves. I'm going to lay the run line. Next up, let's talk about the Orioles and Red Sox game between Cole Irvin and Tanner Houck on the mound. And we see Cole Irvin making his Orioles debut in this one. You know, he's not really my type of pitcher that I look to back too often because he is a pitch-to-contact guy. Doesn't earn a ton of strikeouts last year, 6.4 Ks per nine. That's well below average for strikeouts and you know strikeout rate for starters. But I will say, you know, he pitched for the Oakland Athletics. It's not an easy thing to do. And he was one of their better starters in terms of ERA, a 3.98 ERA. He gave him 181 innings of work. So that's exactly what the A's wanted from him. And he back-to-back -back seasons, really, of just being a workhorse starting pitcher. The Orioles will look for the same for him this year. And, you know, it's an Orioles rotation. It's kind of so-so on paper. But the, the lineup looks real strong. And I expect the Orioles to get to Tanner Houck in this one. Houck had a 20 and a third innings pitch in spring training with a 9.74 ERA. Yes, he struck out a ton of batters, but he gave up nine home runs in those 20 and a third innings. He gave up 12 walks as well. I don't think he can be trusted at Fenway Park here against an Orioles lineup that already showed in the first game of this series. It's going to be a tough lineup to face no matter who's on the mannequin for the opposition. So give me the Baltimore Orioles at plus money. I also lean towards the over in this one. Next up, we see another Major League debut on the mound for the Mets as Kodai Senga takes on Trevor Rogers of the Marlins. Now, you know, it's really tough to back the Marlins in this one because Trevor Rogers he struggled in 2022, both overall. He had a 5.47 ERA and against these New York Mets with an above 5 ERA in those outings as well. 5.79 in two outings where he gave up 12 base hits in nine and a third innings. And he, he struck out 12 batters, which, you know, is actually pretty solid. But 
The New York Mets are a lineup that doesn't really strike out much, so I don't think Rodgers is going to be able to depend on those strikeouts. And to me, Rodgers is a strikeout-dependent pitcher. When we saw him struggle in 2022, his strikeout rate went down compared to his 2021 season where he had an, a below-3 ERA. He had 157 strikeouts in 133 innings that season. So you know, I do worry about Rodgers in this outing. I think the Mets will get to him for a few runs early. We know the Marlins' defense not the greatest. We know their lineup is not the strongest either this year. So to me, it's just tough to back the fish here. And when we're getting a really good number with the New York Mets as the road team. So, you know, Kodai Senga on the other end in spring training, he pitched nine innings. He had a four ERA. He gave up one home run, but he had uh, 10 strikeouts. The five walks are a little bit concerning. You know, he had some control issues uh, in spring, but he's a guy that keeps the ball on the ground for the most part. A career point six home runs per nine in the Japanese league. So I think Senga pitches well here. Give me the New York Mets on the money line. Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Cincinnati Reds. We're going to see Vince Velasquez and Graham Ashcraft on the mound. We got one of these pitchers that pitched really well in spring training and Graham Ashcraft facing Vince Velasquez, who did not pitch very well in spring. And overall, just Vince Velasquez is not a pitcher that I'm looking to back very often uh, this season and in years prior. He had a 4.78 ERA last year uh, with the Chicago White Sox and, and 75 and a third innings pitch. His strikeouts were at 69, which is not too bad for a guy like Velasquez, but he walked 25 batters. The home run ball has always been a problem for Vince Velasquez, and I do think it's going to be an issue in this one at Great America Ballpark, a very hitter-friendly ballpark where we see plenty of home runs hit. You know, Graham Ashcraft, like I said, pitched really well in spring training. I like what I saw from him in 2022 for the most part uh, with the Cincinnati Reds. You know, ZRA was at 4.89, but I don't think it tells the full story for Ashcraft. I think the second half of the year, he was a lot stronger. So I'm going to take the Cincinnati Reds here. I'm going to take him on the money line. Next up, we go to the Chicago White Sox-Houston Astros matchup. Mike Clevenger and Luis Garcia are your starters for this one. You know, this was, you know, Luis Garcia was one of those starting pitchers that a lot of people were uh, wondering how they were going to be able to adjust to the new pitch clock rules. As Garcia has a very slow windup, and he's just a very slow pitcher in general. He likes to take his time. In spring training, his first taste of the new pitching rules, he had nine and two-thirds innings pitch with a 4.66 ERA and only seven strikeouts, which is a little bit concerning, but for me, I think he is the better starting pitcher in this one. Mike Clevenger was not sharp in 2022 with the Padres. A 4.33 ERA and 114 innings of work only 91 strikeouts. That's the number really that scares me for him up you know, in this upcoming season. In spring training, he had 15 and two-thirds innings of work with a 6.89 ERA, gave up 17 base hits, five home runs, uh, 12 earned runs, and 14 strikeouts. So still below that nine strikeouts per nine that I'm looking for a guy like Clevenger, a guy who uh, similar to Rogers, Trevor Rogers, is a guy I think is strikeout dependent. So I think the Astros can get to Clevenger more than the White Sox can get to Luis Garcia. I think for that reason, I'm going to take the Houston Astros and take them on the money line. Next up, we see the Minnesota Twins taking on the Kansas City Royals with Joe Ryan and Brad Keller on the mound. You know, Joe Ryan at times in 2022 had issues with keeping the ball on the ground. He was giving up a lot of fly balls and because of that, giving up a good amount of home runs towards the end of the season. So although he had a really strong start to the year, he finished the season at 3.55 ERA, which is you know not too bad. But I will say in the final few starts, the last four starts of the year for Joe Ryan, that's when I thought he was his best, you know, really throughout the season where he had four outings against the Royals, Guardians, Angels, and Tigers. Didn't give up a single home run. His strikeouts were there. And, you know, he faced in, in that outing against the Royals, he went seven innings, nine strikeouts, no base hits, uh, two walks allowed, and a six to three Twins win. If we get that Joe Ryan in this game, it's going to be very tough for the Royals to compete offensively, especially when you got Brad Keller on the other side, a starter I just can't trust, had an ERA above five last season. And, uh, you know, his spring training numbers weren't great either. When you look at his numbers against the Minnesota Twins in 2022, he faced them for 14 innings of work. He gave up 16 base hits, 10 home runs. He had 11 strikeouts, so below nine strikeouts per nine, eight walks allowed, and overall a 6.43 ERA. I got to take the Minnesota Twins in this one, even though the price is a little bit steep on the road as the road favorite. I think they're the better team with the better starter and the better bullpen. So give me the Minnesota Twins on the money line. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the St. Louis Cardinals with Chris Bassett and Jordan Montgomery. You know, both starters had inconsistent springs, and we saw both of these lineups, what they can do in the opening day game where it was a 10-9 final score. 
I think both of these bullpens have some question marks, but I don't think there's any question marks with these lineups. You got the Cardinals, uh, Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado, two of the best hitters in the National League, two of the best hitters in the entire league. And you know, Paul Goldschmidt, the MVP of last year, already starting the season strong. He went two for four in that first game with an RBI. We saw George Springer for the Blue Jays go five for six in his opening day start. You know, I think we're going to see a plenty of runs in this game, probably not as many as we saw in the first game, but enough to get us over the total. So give me the over in the Blue Jays Cardinals. Next up, it's the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Chicago Cubs. Eric Lauer and Jamison Tyone are your pitchers for this one. Eric Lauer's got a really good fastball, but to me, he just doesn't use it as well as he could. He's a guy that I would think should have double-digit strikeouts per nine every single season, but he's kind of hanging around 8.9, 8.8 strikeouts per nine in his career. And we saw in spring training, the strikeout numbers dropped even more, where he had 11 and two-thirds innings with nine strikeouts and an 11.57 ERA where he gave up 22 base hits, 16 total runs, 15 of those were earned, and seven walks as well. Now what you want to see for a guy that gives up a good amount of fly balls, has some issues giving up the home run ball, and I do think even though we're at Wrigley Field where the weather's just kind of been all over the place, this might not be a you know a bad place to pitch for Eric Lauer. I still think Jameson Tayo, when you look at his spring training, 23 strikeouts and 18 innings of work, so he had a lot of work in spring training, a 3.93 ERA with his new team. I think the Chicago Cubs proved in that opening day game that they're going to be a team to be able to compete with some of these NL Central teams, especially the Pirates, Reds, and Brewers. And I think they have a good shot of winning this game. So at a solid price, give me the Chicago Cubs. Next up, it's the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Oakland Athletics. We're going to see two lefties on the mound for this one in Tyler Anderson and Ken Waldachuk. Waldachuk was acquired by the A's in that Frankie Montas trade with the New York Yankees. And it pains me to say it, but as a Yankee fan, I got to say the Oakland A's are destroying them in that trade. J.P. Sears, Ken Waldachuk, two strong pitching prospects for the A's while Frankie Montas has battled injuries. And he just hasn't really you know, panned out to be a very good starting pitching option for the Yankees in his limited work. But anyway, you know, Ken Waldachuk's a starter that I do think is going to have some really good uh, innings for the, for the Athletics this season. But I do worry about him in this particular outing and the first few starts for him in 2023 we saw him struggle in spring training in terms of the earned runs and the walks he had 12 walks and 13 and two-thirds innings that's not going to get it done eight uh, 7.9 walks per nine also gave up four home runs so a 10.54 era in the spring tough to back you when you're facing an angels lineup that definitely hit lefties a lot better than righties towards the end of the season the final two months of the year the angels power numbers against lefties went way up their ops numbers were obviously pretty good their strikeout rate was way down and their walk rate was a lot better so i do think the Angels can get to Waldachuk for a few runs early. The yeah, Oakland Athletics bullpen is actually not too bad, but I still think the Angels have the better pen overall. I think the Angels have the better starting pitcher on the mound also, and two of the best players in baseball in Shohei and Mike Trout. So give me the Angels here on the run line. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks with two righties on the mound and Zach Davies and Noah Syndergaard. Now, Noah Syndergaard is just not the same pitcher he once was with the New York Mets, where he was able to strike out double-digit guys per nine innings. We saw last year in his time with the Angels and the Phillies, overall a 6.3 strikeouts per nine rating. You know, his home runs per nine went down, but I still do worry about Noah Syndergaard going into 2023. His spring training was not strong. He had 18 and two-thirds innings of work. Only 13 strikeouts, so like I said, those strikeout numbers way down from his career and his time with the New York Mets. He gave up, he had a 5.79 ERA, three home runs allowed, which is also pretty concerning for a ground ball pitcher if you're giving up those home runs, not what you want to see. I think this Arizona Diamondbacks lineup is young and exciting. I think they're going to be able to score some runs on Syndergaard, but I just can't get there with Zach Davies. As much as I'd love to take the Diamondbacks on the money line at this really good money, uh, plus money price or taking plus the one and a half, Zach Davies in spring was atrocious. Seven and two thirds innings, 11 earned runs, three homers. He had 11 strikeouts, so he was missing a lot of bats. But when he wasn't striking out batters, they were getting on base and uh, hitting home runs left and right. 12.91 ERA. Overall, last year wasn't the best season for Zach Davies. You're facing one of the toughest lineups in baseball. Give me the over in the Dodgers Diamondbacks. In our next game, it's the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Seattle Mariners. Count Quantrill and Marco Gonzalez are your starters. Now, I mentioned in the game between the Guardians and Mariners when Robbie Ray was making his season debut that the Guardians were not a very trustworthy lineup against lefties overall in 2022. At the end of the season, they started to get a lot better. That didn't matter in the game against Robbie Ray as the Guardians lineup was strong in that one. They only struck out three times against Ray. They had four base hits, they earned five walks, and they scored three runs, three earned runs 
on Robbie Ray. And against Marco Gonzalez, another lefty, I think the Guardians can get to him as well. Marco Gonzalez really struggled in spring. He's a guy that gives up a lot of home runs, which may not be uh, too, but too big of an issue in this game because the Guardians are not a very powerful lineup, but still a guy that doesn't strike out a lot of guys. So the Guardians, a team that already doesn't strike out much, they should be able to get on base plenty of times in this one against Marco. You know, Cal Quantrill was not my favorite option to back last year, even though he was a very profitable pitcher in terms of his win-loss record. I think he's good enough here at T-Mobile Park to get the Guardians a win. So give me the Cleveland Guardians on the money line. Next up, it's the Colorado Rockies taking on the San Diego Padres with Seth Lugo and Austin Gomber on the mound for this one. You know, Austin Gomber was one of those pitchers for the Rockies that has those strange numbers where he actually has worse ERA on the road than he does at home, but he struggled really both at Coors Field and in his road starts in 72 innings pitched at Coors, a 5.25 ERA, and 52 and two-thirds innings on the road, a 5.98 ERA. I do think the Padres will get to him, even though the San Diego offense has kind of been uh, you know, a slow start to the season their first two games. I think they'll be able to score some runs. They, they hit lefties pretty well in 2022. I think they get to Gomber here for a few, and the Rockies' bullpen not so sharp on paper. It's doing pretty well to start the year, but I don't think it's going to last for much longer. Seth Lugo on the other end, a starting pitcher that you know wanted to be. He was in the, in the uh, bullpen for the Mets last year. He wanted to make the move to a starting pitching role. And the Padres had some injuries in their rotation to start the season. So here he is pitching as a starter here for San Diego. You know, spring training numbers were a little bit concerning. And we see the Rockies offense doing pretty well, which is not really surprising, even though they're on the road. Uh, Colorado has not played a course field yet. You know, they played their spring training games in Arizona. So they have not really had to deal with the altitude difference that we, they, we usually take or we usually see from the Rockies when they go from Coors to on the road. We see it with the opposing teams that play at Coors as the road team. Then they move on to a different series. They also struggle offensively, pretty much so in that first series back. So uh, because Colorado has not been at Coors, the offense has been fine. C.J. Crone's off to a hot start to the season. I think the Rockies can score some runs for us as well. So give me the over in the Rockies Padres. And the final game for Sunday's card in Major League Baseball. It's your Sunday Night Baseball contest on ESPN. It's the Philadelphia Phillies and the Texas Rangers. A pair of lefties on the mound for this one in Bailey Falter and Martin Perez. You know, Martin Perez, not really a strikeout guy. He had 169 strikeouts in 2022, but in 196 innings of work. So well below nine strikeouts per nine. The rating that I'm looking to see for most starting pitchers. But you know, Mar Martin Perez does a really good job of keeping the ball on the ground. He's a ground ball pitcher, double play pitcher. And he pitched twice against the Phillies in 2022. Didn't give up a single earned run. So this sets up to be another solid outing for Martin Perez and Bailey Falter on the other end. Concerning numbers for in spring training for him. And you know, lefties, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, Texas Rangers hit lefties very well when they were playing at home last season. So I think the Rangers can get after Falter early on and take the lead after the first five innings. We took the Rangers' first five on opening day. I think that was a pretty exciting game. I know uh, you know a lot of people were giving up on, the, and that, on that ticket in the first four innings where it was 5 nothing Phillies. We had it all the way. I mean, a nine-run inning for the fourth and, and for the Rangers. We knew it was coming. It, it was pretty simple there. But I think we get a little bit of an easier win here for the Rangers in the first five. So give me the Texas Rangers' first five money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Sunday in Major League Baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ronald Bonelli. Good luck.